Praise the Lord again. It is, it is good to be here. Amen. We, we thank him for, for a marvelous week. Uh, it, was, it was a week of excellence, and we, we had a great program and a great time. My kudos to, to uh, Dove volunteers that came out. You did an excellent job. Pastor was godly proud. So many of you responded and came out each day we had enough staff to function and we were grateful to that. We were grateful for the sacrifice. Uh, uh, when, you, when you give of yourself, it is the highest offering you can give. It's something that you can't get back your lifetime. And so, so it is a blessing to give, amen? And maybe if you give life, life will come. That's how that works. And so we, we were just so, so blessed with so many things. Uh, 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 we, uh, we had people to come on their selected days. And then on, um, on Friday, we went to the museum, and, and several things happened. Uh, and uh, we, we were just great. We had some, some interesting kids that, that challenged us that showed up during the week. But they were handled graciously and with love. Amen. Amen, amen. One wanted to know, you know, uh, the recipe for the spaghetti, and uh, he trolled the kitchen every day for lunch. And we had to run him outside every day. <laughs> I got to go to the restroom. He was going to stop by the kitchen every day. And, uh, and then he would ask for a plate for his mom to go home. And I know, and he know it was his mid-afternoon snack. I said, you act like you playing us. And for shame, he started eating it before he could get out the door. Well, we had some staff that showed up on, on the last day. That's, that's okay, I'm not going off on that. They, they were, we were glad. But I wanted to let that staff person know that there was a group of people that wanted to give you three of our most challenging kids. And I wouldn't let them do it. I said, have mercy on her. But they said, give them all to Helene. <laughs> well, when we got to the museum, it's funny how when you have a vantage point, you can sit in one spot. And, and the way that museum is designed, the floors, you can see that level down here, then you can see over there, then you can see up. Well, I saw a couple of my staff people. They were standing in the middle of the floor. We gave every kid a badge, and each, each, each uh, volunteer had a color on, the, 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 the leader had a color on, and the kids had a color on to match it. So you were supposed to keep up with the kids with the color on your badge. Everybody got that? Yeah. Keep up with the kids with what? The color. Well, some of them I found in the middle of the room, looking from badge to badge. <laughs> And I just tipped over to him and tapped him on the shoulder. I said, have you lost your children? <laughs> and, and one wonderful young man said, yeah, Pastor, they zooming all around. <laughs> he was turning in circles, reading the badges and stuff. I got him so bad, he didn't even know. Then I walked up to two other, others. They were just sitting on the pew. On a, on, a, on a bench with their legs crossed. They didn't know where their kids was and they didn't care. They just kept sitting there. They over there, they over there, they somewhere in here. We had a good time. We had a marvelous time. It was so much fun. The kids had a great time. The adults hated the water area, the H2O, but the kids loved it. And uh, they came home a little soggy, some more wet than others, but we had a great time. All of your support, all of your help, 
I wish we could have uh, just just done just just great things for everybody. But we 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 gave our gifts to the kids. They had we went home with prizes and many other things. And so we were great. We were great for our professional staff that came through and just taught. We have people that know how to do stuff in so many ways. And so we identify special needs in kids. And, and, and so because of that, uh, uh, some of you said, Rose, I'm going to write a letter and send it to the parents and, and urge them to, 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 to do some things. Because some of our kids need to be tested, too. As we discern things in their life, they need to be tested. It was a great program. We met 98% of our objectives. We got the money we needed. We needed a few more kids uh, to, to hit the, the 30, but we did hit 26. And, 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 and Val told me, Pastor, don't pray for no more here. <laughs> she told me that on the bus ride. She, she didn't say much the whole trip. She just looked over me and she said, Pastor, you know, don't pray, you know, this is quite enough right here. Hold it, right? And I laughed so hard while there were two sitting on, on the side of her doing all manner of things. She just... <laughs> so we had a good time. It, it was great. And, 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 and we thank God for you because it was ministry. And, and everybody came through. Chris did a wonderful job with the lunches, her and culinary arts. And, and lit, yeah, every day. Every day. They had more than enough and they ate up everything. Yeah. So we, we, we thank God and uh, we, we, we just met our objective. And so I would, and, and remember last week when I said, or week before that, that I would pray that it wouldn't be any rain on the program. It did not rain on the program, yeah. as I said. So you make sure when pastor says something from the pulpit, from the pulpit, from this front door to the back door, that you're in agreement with me. Because it means that ministry will get served. Amen. And we had good weather. The hottest day was probably Monday. Uh, Thursday was, was gorgeous. It was about uh, just under 80. And they, they, they stayed outside a long, long time, you know. And we, we were glad we made, we thank God for Marcus. We made our, our video. We're going to release it after we fine tune it. And you'll see uh, what we did as far as the PSA announcement. Thanks, Sharonda, for being the voiceover person for it. And so we, we just had a great week. It was wonderful. And it was to benefit not only the kids from the neighborhood, but the kids in our church, too. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God. Uh, for what was done. Amen. Yeah. Give yourselves a big hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Everybody that donated something, even some that aren't here, you brought juice, you brought water, you brought all kind of goodies, you brought crafts, you, you know, just stuff showed up and it was, it was just marvelous and, and, and I thank God you supplied financial wherewithal. Pastor, what do you need? They would ask me in the middle of the week, you know, don't ask me that because I think of something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but we, we were able to do what we needed to do, and we ended up in the black, not the red. Amen. 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 So we thank the Lord, and I appreciate you. I appreciate my, my new people coming on board and helping. I was really happy with, 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 with Terrence and, and Tara. Amen. Amen. We found a new skill set in Tara. She got patience. She just, just did yeah. stuff. She was all yeah. over. Now, now we're going to forgive Terrence. He's the one I was talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but to his redemption, he found them as they were getting on the bus. There, <laughs> there you are. There you are. <laughs> We had a wonderful time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we wore out because of it, because they, uh, they, children take energy. And you need to have energy to work with them. Amen. Uh, a special skill in Yvonne. She, by, by the time, I think an hour in, she knew all the kids' names. You know, one she said, that's Jesus. And I had been saying, hey, Jesus. And <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I had to 
tell him I'm not talking to you. Huh? <laughs> Come on, let's receive special music at this.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. alive in each and every one of us. Amen. 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 Well, everyone, let's lift our Bibles as we begin. Everyone, let's say it together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. So that's what I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've planned and purposed for this day, God. We thank you for this time that you allow us to gather around your word, and we thank you for your word in our lives. Now, God, I pray that each and every one that is under the sound of my voice will have a heart to hear, ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. May we leave here better than we came because of your word. We thank you and we praise you. And God, I pray that I be able to give what you've given me for your people. May you be glorified in every aspect of it. I thank you, I praise you, I bless you, and I honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, in the story today, we're going to talk about a particular judge 
that we have little information on, but it's enough information to encourage and challenge us. But before we read our scripture, there are three questions I want you to ponder yourself through uh, during this message. And they are, one, it's going to be on the board, what am, I going, what am I doing to serve the Lord? What am I doing actively and intentionally to serve him? Number two, is what I'm doing what he wants me to do? And this really is a two-part question because the other part of it is, am I doing all he wants me to do? And the third one is, do I understand and appreciate how important and how valuable what I do for the kingdom is? Amen? And my prayer today is that um, God will speak to your heart about these questions as we go through the message. So, let's turn to the book of Judges. Oh, sure. One, two, and three. Please put them back up. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Let me know when you have them. Amen. Amen? All right. All right. Just want you to think about them as, you know, as I um, go through the message today. Are we ready? All right. All right. <laughs> it's going to be interesting for me today because I'm using my iPad, y'all. Pray for me. So let's turn to the book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 31. Judges, chapter 3, verse 31. And it reads, After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. The message today is titled, Shamgar, a Hidden Hero. So this one verse is about a judge named Shamgar. He was one of many judges in the book of Judges who God used at a critical time in the life of Israel. When Joshua led the children of Israel to the promised land, they arrived with instructions. They were told to drive out all that were there and completely possess and inhabit the land. They were instructed to tear down all the altars and the shrines of the false and foreign gods and be faithful to the one true and living God as his people, but they didn't. They could have done it. They had the power to do it, but they didn't. Joshua had died and they all began doing all kinds of evil before the Lord. They made covenants with people who worship idols and false gods. They were intermarrying uh, and formed covenant relationships with those who pulled them away from their intimate relationship with God. They made a lot of mistakes. In fact, throughout the first chapter of uh, Judges, you, we always see phrases that say they did not drive out the inhabitants and they would list the different lands like the Amorites, the Parasites, the Jebusites, and so on and on and on. But because of their disobedience, the Lord allowed them to be delivered up to their enemies. So here's how it went. Each time they were unfaithful, God allowed the foreign army to come in, possess the land, take their crops, take their possessions, and reign 
over them until they turned and cried out to the Lord. Each time, though, God was faithful. He would raise up a judge to deliver them. Shamgar was one of those judges. So Shamgar goes down in history with this single verse and another reference to him in chapter 5, verse 6. That's all we know about him. In fact, there's a lot we don't know about him. We don't know if he was an Israelite because he didn't have a Hebrew name. We don't know if he was an Egyptian, as some might speculate. But one thing is for sure. God used him, and God will use anyone to accomplish his kingdom purposes. We don't know if he acted alone, if he was with others, when he slayed the 600 Philistines, or if he did it at once, or if he did it over a period of time. You know what? And it really doesn't matter, because none of those factors changed the outcome of what he did. Now, with that all being told about uh, the, this judge, let's not disassociate ourselves with Shamgar because of what we don't know. Because I believe we are more like this judge than we know about. Amen? Here's what we know from the scripture. Number one, we know about his availability. Shamgar started where he was at. In fact, if you study the book of Judges, you'll find a large number of ordinary people who came out of obscurity for a certain amount of time. They do something extraordinary, and then they will retreat back to obscurity. Not insignificant. You just never saw them written about in the scriptures. And they all had varying abilities. Some were farmers, some were warriors, some were prophets, some were judges. Some were politicians and lawyers. They all, became, um, they all became judges over Israel like Shamgar. Now this story tells us what Shamgar's particular ability may have been. Shamgar had the ability to goad an ox because that's what was, that's what was in his hand. So if you had an ox goad, what might you be? You probably were a farmer. You probably were someone who worked in the field, or if not, you were probably someone who works with a pair or a team of uh, oxen, and you would help to move those oxen and to either build, tear down, or plant things. In all likelihood, Shamgar was a farmer. So whether it was a Gideon who thrust the wine press, who, th who thrust wheat in the wine press, or a Shamgar, who perhaps drove in the field, oxen in the field, they all had something in common. Not the same ability, but they had availability. It's not their ability that counted. It was their availability to be used by God that counted. And so that should be a lesson for us. Each and every one of us are unique. In fact, there's no one like you. No one like you at all. No one can be better than you. Although you can be a better you, no one can be, no one else can be better than you for yourself. You got it? All right. So you are just unique. And that's the way God made us. And so along with that uniqueness comes a personality, comes gifts, comes talents that God has placed inside of you to unlock your purpose, what you were created to do on this earth. And so it's not about how smart you are, how much education or money you have or have not. It's not about who you are or who you're not or what kind of resources you have. If we don't make ourselves available to God to use for kingdom and for his glory, we are not fulfilling what we were placed on this earth to do. One of the things that was most significant about Shamgar and all the other judges is that they couldn't have done what they did with what they had without God. God was the common denominator. Availability, yes, but most importantly, available to be used by God. And because they made themselves available, 
God came down and did amazing things in and through them um, for that reason. And it's the same with us. It is what God does when you make yourself available to him that makes you significant. The second thing we know in this story is Shamgar's resources. Shamgar used what he had. From this single scripture, we see his resources were very limited. And what did he have? He had an ox gold. It didn't seem like it was much, but he made, he made it work. What is an ox gold? Well, an ox gold is an eight foot pole, iron pole, and on one end is a blunt uh, surface and it's pointed. It's blunt because the goal of the tool is not to injure the ox, but to get its attention. The farmer is the person, the farmer or the person using the tool uses the stick to prod or to goad the ox in, into action or to speed up the process. It's not designed to hurt them, just to move them along. So this tool was not designed to be a weapon. The other end of the pole is broader and it's flat and it's designed to uh, knock away the mud that's on the plow or to remove the clay from the wheels. A very useful tool if you're a farmer, but a not a go-to instrument if you're gonna slay 600 people. But Shamgar took this farm tool, turned it into a weapon, and killed 600 Philistines. Yeah. It would be equivalent to killing 600 ISIS terrorists today. Yeah. Yeah. He was against incredible odds, yeah. 600 to one. Yeah. I don't know what kind of odds you're facing in your life today, what kind of storm you might be in, what kind of health or educational or financial issues you may be facing, or what kinds of struggles you have with sin uh, in your life, but these things make us feel overwhelmed. But can you imagine 600 to one against you? Shamgar had to fight the enemies with what he had. And that's the same for us. We have to fight the enemy with what we have. We've got to take what God has given us and use it against the enemy. What is your ox gold? God's given you one. Oh yeah, he's put something in your hand. God asked Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? Moses said nothing but a stick. God said throw it down. And when he threw it down, the supernatural hit hit the stick, and it swallowed up Pharaoh's snakes. When he held it up, it parted the Red Sea. See, the miracle is not in what you don't have, but it's in what you do have. What do you have in your hand? Use what you have. God has given you what you need to get the job done. Look at the person next to you and say, you can win with what you got. You see, what we've got to do is stop focusing in on what we don't have. God has given you something that you can win the battle with. Amen? And you know something else? We also have enthusiasm and passion. Shamgar had passion. You can't slay 600 terrorists without some kind of passion. Sham Shamgar did this because he saw that his nation was under threat and something came over him. The Bible said he also delivered Israel. Though the scriptures don't tell us whether he charged all the men at once or whether he ambushed them, let's imagine what could have happened. In Judges 5, 6, the, scripture, the other scripture where Shamgar is mentioned, it suggests that the Philistines were terrorists and they post themselves along the highway and rob people as they traveled and uh, travel along the main thoroughfare. So imagine Shamgar picking them off, 20, 30, 40 at a time. Imagine how he looked. He probably looked like a wild, bloody man with a bloody weapon in his hand. But Shamgar used what he had. And he had passion, 
and he had enthusiasm in what he did. Did you know the word enthusiasm has a Greek uh, root meaning, and it means God, in God, I'm sorry, it means in God. So when you're in God, and God is in you, you should be overflowing with enthusiasm. You should have a passion for your life, for what God has given you. Now the last thing I want to talk about is doing what you can. Shamgar did what he could. And God wants the same from you. God wants you to do what, what God wants you to do only what you can do. He wants you to do what you can. And so you ask the question, well, what can I do? Number one, you can pray. See, we have a secret weapon that Shamgar, it's not even mentioned in that scripture. We have prayer. Last week, Pastor gave us some powerful insight about prayer. And you know, the thing about it is we can't say enough about prayer. Prayer takes us to places we can't even go in person. In John 14, uh, 13, 14, Jesus said, and whatever you ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. E.B. Bounds said, prayers alive, I'm sorry, prayers outlive the lives of those who utter them. Yes. Prayers are deathless. They outlive a generation, yes. they outlive an age, yes. and they outlive a world. Many of us today are where we're at today because someone prayed for us. People who kept our names before the Lord. Prayer is the most powerful thing we can do. Number two, stay focused. Unclutter your life and keep focus. The enemy is good as trying to distract us and discourage us. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3 and 13, Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things that are ahead, we must move forward in our lives. And number three, follow through on the three questions given at the beginning of the message. Be actively and intentionally serving the Lord. Yes. Two, do all that he wants you to do. And three, understand and appreciate how important and valuable what you do for the kingdom. We must remember the situations around us doesn't determine the outcome because nothing can diminish God's ability. When we face overwhelming odds, it's not our ability, but it's God's ability that matters. God wants our availability. He wants our resources, using what we have. And lastly, he wants us to do what we can. And God will do what we can't. Amen? Amen. There's a story I want to read to you if I can get it up on my iPad. All right. <laughs> uh, and this is a story about, a, about the founder of Domino's Pizza, Tom Moynihan. And this story uh, goes on to say he started when he, he started when he, uh, when, in 1960. Um, in 1959, he enrolled into the University of Michigan, intending to be an architect. He and his brother borrowed $900 to purchase a, purchase a small pizza store called Dominic's in Ypsilanti. He got into the pizza business to pay his way through school. The pizza business was losing so much money, he never got back into architect, architecture. He struggled to make ends meet, traded his brother a Volkswagen Beetle for his half of the business, and by the end of eight years, a fire burned his little shop into ashes and the insurance company only paid him one cent on the dollar for his losses. All he knew was pizza, 
So he started another shop. He had to work 100 hour, he had, he had to work 100 hour work weeks uh, with no days off. By 1971, he was $1.5 million in debt. He continued in the pizza business, uh, and after a lawsuit with Domino Sugar, the business grew into, uh, grew, and it, it was called Domino's Pizza. Because remember, that's all he knew how to do. Mr. Moynihan tried something different at this point. He decided to limit his menu to pizza only and deliver it hot and fresh to customers for free and focus delivery to college campuses. He invented, a, he invented a new insulated pizza box that would be stacked, that could be stacked without crushing the pizzas inside and keeping them warm until they arrived to their customers. Moynihan continued to spread his model to other college towns through a tightly controlled franchising system. And by the mid 1980s, there were nearly three new Domino franchises opening every single day. In 1998, Monahan sold 90% of stock ownership of Domino's Pizza to an investment firm in Boston for an estimated $1 billion. Today, Moynihan is a wealthy man spending most of his money on philanthropic causes. He owned the Detroit Tigers, a baseball team, for nine years and sold pizza, uh, sold it to com pizza competitor Tom Illich of Little Caesars Pizza in 1992. So this is a story of how when you use what you have, what else? Anybody? First of all, start where you're at. Use what you got. And you keep on doing it, doing what you're supposed to do. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Come on, give her another hand. Amen. real good see we think we need to have a long resume and some of the people in the Bible there is only one line mentioned about them and they've done a phenomenal job when you can take one ox gold and kill 600 Philistines with it you've done a mighty job but you know it was supernatural help all God wants to do is, is, is know if you will trust him with what you got in your hand and all of us have something in our hand. How many of you know you were sent to the planet with something? You got something. And, and, and if you don't use that something, why do you need to stay on the planet? He did not call you to perpetual rest. Oh, okay. All right. Because we think that's what he called us to. He called us to do something. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes we spend a lot of years trying to find out what, is, what that is to do, but it's already with us. Wow. It's in our hand. Wow. And, and sometimes we don't think it's enough because we keep looking at what's in everybody else's yeah, everybody. hand. Wow. It, it's what's in your hand. And, and the funny thing about what he's given you that's in your hand, it, it, it'll work for you. What's in your hand will work for you. Yeah. He told Moses to cast down the stick. Yeah. He told Moses to cast out the rod because it was with him. Yeah. It was in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. You may not see it, but it's in your hand. God has called you to do something. And to be available to do it. When you call upon to be available to do something, that's not the time to put up a bunch of excuses and say, I can't do it because, or you start fussing. You don't have, the, the next thing she said was there, that there must be a passion to do something. When we had our, 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 our growth track today, Philip and I were talking about passion. 
There's something you got to get excited about doing. Beside eating. There ought to be a passion in your heart. What happened last week, it came off well, but God used what, what I wanted to operate in because it's passion for me. How many of you saw the passion pay off? It attracted money. A big portion of our money to a Christian program came from a Jewish doctor because you dare use what you got. What do I have? I had an ask. Would you? And he did. That's how it happens. It's no magic. It's just trust in God. And you know what? We think sometimes we have to have all the answers before we can get something done. Just start doing something and the answer will come. That stuff I prayed about all week. God, you got to show me how we're going to fit this together. How we're going to do this. And on, 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 on the spur, I just made the adjustment. I made the adjustment while we were still in route. While we were still doing something. And you think you need to know plan A to Z before. You, you, don't, need to, you don't need God if you got the plan from A to Z. What you need is God will show you the A and he'll show you the Z. But the stuff in the middle, you don't see it. That's where your availability is B. Your passion is C. Your desire to do it is D. And he walks you through it piece by piece, trusting him every step of the way. Surely thank you for the lesson on Shamgar today. And an ox go. Something that wasn't designed to kill Philistines, but to redirect people. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that thing at again, that obstacle thing? D -d designed to, I know what was scripture. I said, where are them things at? I need one of them to, to read. instrument. I, I don't want to hurt nobody. I just want to push you. Get over there. Stop that. Get out of there. Some of it I want to just use over the mouth. Stop it. Stop it. I need an ox though. <laughs> Is that much different from ox and sheep? <laughs> well, let's talk about what the shepherd has. His ox gold is his hook. It's still a blunt instrument, but it's got a hook at the bottom. And the hook is for necks. heels of this message while the anointing is resting in this place over this, this particular word spoken. If you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord or maybe you need to reconnect with him this is a good time to do it. Come back. Be restored. Join. Become a part of the body of Christ for real. That's you. The one thing the next thing I ask you is just to raise a hand. 
That's me, Pastor. I want to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. And the only other call I'm going to do beside that one is, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In our lesson this morning, we talked about being in, 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 in Growth Track 1, talked about one of the things that's a benefit to believers is being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It happened on the day of Pentecost, and from then on in, people were, were, were filled. Filled. What does it do? It gives you a prayer language, a language between you and the Lord. It's a sign to unbelievers that God is with the believers. And, it's a, and, 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 and according to Scripture, it helps you stir yourself up when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Stirs you to, to good works. Stirs you to godly uh, sorrow. Stirs you to so many things. So you need it. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to speak. So if that's you and you want to be filled, it can happen simply. It can happen in this place. Don't overthink it. Just receive it. He's the same God that if you ask for bread, he won't give you anything else. He'll give you bread. He'll give you what you need. How many of you you asked for it and he gave it to you. Amen. He gave you what you asked for. In Jesus' name. So if you want to be filled and you know it's available to you and you want to get all that the word says you can have, you want to be filled, just slip up a hand and say, that's me, Pastor. I want to be filled. I want to be filled. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray, church. Hallelujah. Come away from religious stuff. Because the world doesn't understand. Even churches, some of them don't understand. They don't teach it the way it needs to be taught. It's available to you. It's a part of every day. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Well, let's give God some praise in this house. Amen. <laughs> when she was phenomenal and then, then Brittany and Sharonda taught the kids it was phenomenal, the lessons were all interactive, they, they were not just a lecture and they listened they were doing some of the most creative things throughout the building with, with all kind of props canvases, balls emojis, giant ones that they tossed around it was a marvelous thing and we want to say thank you to her. We've already sent her a card and a token uh, as a guest teacher for us. She wrote all the lessons for the lower grade and the upper one. And so we were thankful to her. And I didn't want to let this time pass. It was the core of our No More Bullying campaign. And uh, uh, it became just monumental. How many of you got to witness some of the lessons in action while you were here? Amen. It was a marvelous thing. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, prepare to receive our communion. The Bible says during this time, 